The original God of War was quickly heralded as one of the finest action games of its time. Of course, this led to a franchise of sequels and spin-offs, many of which are considered masterpieces by critics and fans alike. While many praise the much improved storytelling with 2018's God of War, it was the bloody and unrelenting action that earned the originals their place in gaming history. Fueled by Kratos' ever-growing hatred for anything that stood between him and revenge, each God of War game is littered with boss fights of epic scale guaranteed to send you on a massive power trip. Today, we're taking a look back at some of the very best boss battles this revered action series has to offer as I share my picks for the top 10 bosses in the God of War franchise. Number 10, The Hydra. When the first God of War game begins, Kratos is deep in servitude to the other Greek gods, hoping that his service will rid his mind of the troubling visions that have haunted him for years. Hardened by decades of battle, Kratos is already an immensely powerful fighter, clearly evidenced by the legions of bodies left in his wake. When we first meet up with him, he's sailing through some seriously rough waters in pursuit of the mythological Hydra, a three-headed serpent that he must kill to appease the god of the sea, Poseidon. The Hydra is the very first boss fight of God of War and serves as a perfect introduction to the signature spectacle that the franchise has since perfected. After bursting through the floor of the ship and chomping down on the captain, the Hydra sets its sights on Kratos. With a flurry of attacks and a bit of magic, Kratos ultimately kills the beast by skewering its head on the spiked mast of the ship. It's certainly not one of the most challenging bosses of the series, but its magnificent sense of scale and gory finish serve as one of the most memorable in the entire franchise and help set the stage for what's to come. Number 9, Ares. There are quite a few Greek deities on Kratos' seemingly endless list of enemies to defeat, but as the primary cause of his pain and suffering, Ares is the main target for the majority of the first God of War game. As the Greek God of War, Ares is a behemoth of doom and death, but that doesn't dissuade Kratos during his destructive tour for revenge. After battling his way across Olympus and unearthing Pandora's box, which grants him the power to kill a god, Kratos finally gets his duel with Ares in the climactic battle of the first game. Set in the middle of the war-torn city of Athens, the boss fight against Ares was as satisfying as it was spectacular, with Kratos utilizing Pandora's box to grow to an enormous physical size, matching him with Ares. Now finally standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with his fiery nemesis, Kratos engages Ares in a vicious fight to the death. Although Ares does get in a bit of damage against Kratos, it's simply not not enough to overcome Kratos' rage. He ultimately lands the killing blow with the giant blade of the gods. And then, in an ironic twist, killing Ares actually earns Kratos the throne as the new god of war, turning the furious warrior into the one thing he despised the most. I was trying to make you a great warrior. You succeeded. Number 8, Kronos. In God of War 3, Kratos wages an all-out war against the gods of Olympus with the aid of the Titans, truly massive creatures that make Ares and the other baddies look like ants in comparison. While some of the Titans are more than willing to help Kratos on his path of revenge, there are a few that end up on our anti-hero's bad side. This is true of Kronos, a Titan who is forever imprisoned in the Abyss of Tartarus and guards an ancient relic known as the Omphalus Stone. When Kratos requires the stone to further his war effort, Kronos becomes a necessary casualty in the equation. The fight against Kronos feels much more like a fight on Kronos, as Kratos must traverse the enormous Titan, fending off lesser enemies along the way. As Kronos swats at Kratos like an irksome fly, the warrior does everything in his power to inflict maximum pain, even prying off some fingernails in the process. Even after the Titan picks up Kratos and swallows him whole, the warrior cuts his way out from the inside, setting up a killing blow right between the eyes. Simply put, the fight against Kronos proves that size is barely a contributing factor when it comes to Kratos' ability to kill it. Number 7, Baldur. In God of War 2018, Kratos does his best to end the cycle of bloodshed by journeying to the Norse realm of Midgard, where he attempts to raise his young son, Atreus. As expected, this period of peace only lasts so long, as he soon faces off against an assortment of legendary Norse figures. One of the most prominent foes who crosses his path is Baldur, the son of Odin, the Allfather, and the sorceress Freya. Enchanted with an invincibility spell by Freya in an effort to prevent his death, Baldur is a ravenous ball of resentment, unable to feel pain, pleasure, or anything in between. Although Kratos and Baldur have quite an explosive duel at the beginning of the game, their final face-off occurs at the climax of the story, when Baldur attempts to kill Freya in answer to his unfeeling existence. 
Seeing a reflection of his own tragedy playing out in front of him, Kratos tries to kill Balder after Atreus stabs him with an enchanted arrow, which reverses his invincibility and renders him mortal. Even as Freya uses her magic to resurrect a fallen titan to impede Kratos, the fight ensues and ultimately leads to Balder's death. In addition to being one of the most riveting fights in the game, the battle with Balder is also a pivotal point in the narrative, as Kratos finally shares his troubled history with his son. Number 6. Hercules During Kratos' ascent to the top of Mount Olympus in God of War 3, he spills the blood of several overconfident deities in his quest to kill his father Zeus. Arriving at the Forum, he is greeted by Hera, who refuses his requests and sends the powerful champion Hercules to take him on. Arrogant with strength and jealous that his half-brother Kratos has become the God of War while he toils away on Olympus, Hercules holds nothing back in a bloody fight for the ages. The battle against Hercules is both chaotic and challenging, as Kratos must fend off dozens of Hercules' minions while also enduring quips from the drunken Hera, who watches from the balcony above. Even after Kratos strips Hercules of his hefty gauntlets and leaves him bruised and broken, he refuses to back down, forcing our hero to beat his face into a bloody pulp. In a franchise that is full of remarkable, over-the-top violence, the death of Hercules is by far one of the most gruesome moments, making it very hard to forget. Plus, you get to keep his gauntlets in the end, expanding your arsenal and enabling even more face-smashing in the fights to come. Number 5. Poseidon While Poseidon makes a few appearances in the first two games, it's in God of War 3 where the God of the Sea finally faces the wrath of Kratos. At the very beginning of the game, as Kratos rides the Titan Gaia up Mount Olympus, Poseidon attempts to stop their assault but quickly learns he's no match for the new and improved God of War. Wielding a huge trident and riding on the back of a multi-headed horse beast made of water, Poseidon has a lot of bark but lacks the bite to back it up. However, like the battle against Kronos, it's hard not to fall in love with the pure spectacle and scale of this fight. After a quick tussle, Kratos manages to knock Poseidon out of his ocean form and proceeds to thrash him within an inch of his life. Thanks to some creative use of the camera here, we witness this ruthless beatdown through Poseidon's eyes as Kratos maims and disfigures him. Being the first boss fight in God of War 3, this clash with Poseidon firmly raises the bar and establishes an undeniable tone of brutality that persists throughout the game. Number 4. Sigrun, the Valkyrie Queen While there are more than enough bosses to slay in God of War 2018, Sigrun the Valkyrie Queen exists as an optional boss fight for players who really want to test their skill. To unlock this extremely tough battle, you'll have to defeat the eight other Valkyries scattered around Midgard, then bring their helmets to the Council of Valkyries as an offering. Once placed on their respective thrones, Sigrun appears, ready to punish Kratos over and over again. While Sigrun might not be a towering monstrosity or a god of Olympus, she stands stands out as one of the most challenging bosses in any God of War game. Possessing the unique abilities of all eight prior Valkyries and hitting twice as hard, Sigrun will take every ounce of strategy and skill you have to defeat her. She's agile, unpredictable, and quick enough to catch you with counterattacks. Fighting Sigrun offers very little room for error. Besting this incredibly deadly boss is a feat reserved only for the most patient and skilled players around, and once you finally do finish her off, the feeling of reward and satisfaction is pure bliss, and probably one that is unmatched in any other God of War game. Number 3. Hades After falling from Mount Olympus and into the underworld, Kratos is in a particularly bad mood, even for him. So when Hades corners him and attempts to steal his soul, you know things are going to get rough. With most of Hades' relatives and loved ones already massacred at the hands of Kratos, the god of the dead has very little to lose and throws everything he has into this bitter fight to the end. Starting the fight with his ominous opening monologue and ending with Kratos literally ripping out his soul, the fight with Hades is a perfect representation of what makes the God of War series so enthralling. 
The visual design of Hades is incredible. His voice sounds like a mixture of gravel and pain, and then a battle that's just as bloody as they come, even for God of War. Throughout the fight, Kratos rips off Hades' armor piece by piece, eventually disarming him and then using his soul-rending claws to rip open his head, yes, you heard me correct, which unleashes thousands of tormented souls. When it comes to powerful protagonists, there are very few that have ventured through the underworld and slayed its overseer, putting Kratos in a league of his own, and thus cementing this boss fight as one of the most memorable in any God of War game, heck, in any video game throughout history. Number two, the Sisters of Fate. But know this, mortal. There is no power greater than the Sisters of Fate. If you challenge us, you will die. For God of War 2, the developers wanted to go bigger and better in every way, and Kratos' fight against the Sisters of Fate is a stunning example of their overwhelming success. After Zeus quite literally kills Kratos and sends him sprawling into the underworld, the anti-hero looks for a way to reverse his downfall, which ultimately lead him to the Three Sisters of Fate. Hidden on the island of creation, these destiny-weaving siblings control the very fabric of time itself, making them yet another significant obstacle in Kratos' quest for revenge. After hitching a ride on a phoenix, and landing at their front door, Kratos confronts the first two sisters who refuse to bend fate to his will. But it's really the mechanics of this boss fight that make it stand out among the others in the series. This is not an easy fight, it also has multiple phases, and the sisters also seem to get better at parrying as the fight goes on. Midway through the fight, Lachesis will summon her sister Atropos for help. You'll then find yourself transported back to Kratos' climactic battle with Ares at the end of the first game. Kratos lands a big blow on Atropos, which transports him back to the Temple of Fates for the final part of this insane battle. Of course, now the sisters are really angry and you'll have them both attacking at the same time. Fortunately, Atropos is stuck behind the mirrors and can only attack from there. While this boss fight doesn't have that huge sense of scale that some of the other God of War fights do, it's those ever-changing mechanics that always keep you on your toes throughout this fight that I think make it stand as one of the best in the series. Number 1, Zeus. When Kratos finally confronts Zeus at the end of God of War 3, he is still hungry for more vengeance. Casting aside almost every ally he has met along the way, he stands alone, facing down his father and the final target on his list of gods to kill. As the leader of Mount Olympus and all the other gods, Zeus is the most formidable foe in Kratos' long and treacherous journey, resulting in a battle for the ages. As the climactic fight for not only God of War 3, but the end of the original God of War trilogy, the final fight with Zeus checks every box on my boss fight wish list. After their brawl spills out onto the top of Mount Olympus, the Titan Gaia reappears and tries to enter the fight, but Zeus and Kratos end up using her as a battleground instead. Even when Kratos impales Zeus and cripples his physical form, the King of All Gods lashes out at him in spirit form, which sends him spiraling down deep into his own psyche, experiencing visions of his slain wife and child. Kratos finds the power to forgive himself before returning to consciousness to end Zeus once and for all, and thus cementing himself as a true contender for one of the most ruthless protagonists in all of gaming. Kratos forces Zeus' spirit back into corporeal form and doesn't stop punching until his vision is blurred with gallons of blood. If you're a fan of Kratos and his quest for revenge against the gods of Olympus, then you should definitely check out The Iliad by Homer. And thanks to Audible.com, today's sponsor, you can download the audiobook version with a free 30-day trial of Audible Premium Plus by visiting audibletrial.com slash retro. You can keep the audiobook even if you cancel your trial early. The Iliad is a classic Greek tale about the city of Troy and features the likes of Achilles, Agamemnon, and Odysseus who are in a fight over Helen, a daughter of Zeus who's been abducted by a Trojan. Here's an excerpt from the audiobook which is narrated by Dan Stevens. Agamemnon now, I take it... The siege is broken, we are going to sail, and even so may not leave death behind. If war spares anyone, disease will take him. We might, though, ask some priest or some diviner, even some fellow good at dreams, for dreams come down from Zeus as well, why all this anger of the god Apollo? 
If you're already an Amazon Prime member, you'll actually receive two Audible credits with the trial. And even if you aren't a Prime member, you can still use my link to get the Iliad, or any other audiobook of your choice, completely free. If you're interested, you can type out the URL on your screen now, or find it in the video description below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.